Hey guys, it's Angelique. Today I'm back out at Twin Lakes Park to take a look at this brand new 2020 Kia Soul. This is the GT Line Turbo, so we figured we'd take it out and give you a look at this redesigned Kia. So starting in the front here, the new 2020 Souls do have different grills, and then within the lines you have unique grills on the different trims. So this is the GT Line Turbo, you can see the red badging down there. You do start to see some of your red accents, you have the big black. It does have a lot of openings here for airflow. This is the Turbo, so you need a little bit more airflow. You do get your full LED fog and headlights on this model. Coming around to the side, this one has the 18 inch wheels again with a little bit of those red accents down there on kind of the dark gray wheels. Coming around you have the body colored handles, the body colored mirrors, and then you will see this red accent continue. That is for the GT line, just kind of gives it a little bit of a standout appearance. You have some sole badging up here in your traditional black accents that the soles are pretty much known for. Coming around the back here, you have your sole, your GT line. You do have the chrome tip centered exhaust right there. So that, that looks really cool on this turbo model. I think that whole bumper down there just looks really nice. This is unique for this trim. Your black accents around the window kind of just makes it nice and flat there for you. Continuing around, the GT Turbo line does not have the roof accent color, so it is white to match the body, but you do get that nice powered sunroof up there with the big black window, so that kind of stands out a little bit. And then you just finish it off over here. You do have some like indicator lights on the side. It overall just gives it a really sporty look. The outside of this thing was really designed for that fun, sporty, turboed look. So now we're going to go ahead and dive in and look at all the new fun features inside. So for us to go ahead and jump inside, it does have the keyless entry. Kia's new styled key fob, it has the buttons on the side here, so it's really convenient to hold and lock and unlock. But with that keyless entry, you don't even have to pull those keys out. As long as you have it on you, you'll see a little black button there. You can just go ahead and press that and the vehicle will open right up for you. So coming into the inside here, the first thing you'll probably notice on the door are these big red accents. Those do go along with the red accenting on the outside of the car. So depending on your trim, depending on the colors you choose, the interior accents can change. I think the red looks really awesome with the black. You do have your standard controls on the door there for your power windows, your mirrors. Coming down, this is a nice little grip you can hold in here or you can also throw change in there because it does have a raised side so that makes it really convenient to get in and out. Overall the shape of the sole really lends itself well to have these sharp lines on the door. I think it looks really cool the way things pop out here, the way the speakers are incorporated in the door. You do have your standard storage area down here with one cup holder, throw a bottle in there and then you'll start to see your Harman Kardon premium audio system that is on this trim specifically so you will get 10 speakers throughout this sole. So coming to the inside here, I really like how they've designed these vents. My favorite thing about the Soul is just the amount of character that it has. So the vents are definitely uniquely shaped and then you do have your speakers built right into those vents. So I think that looks really nice with that piano shiny black. Coming underneath that you will find some of your options to turn some things on and off. You do get a lot of those advanced safety features so you do have the option to turn on and off your lane keeping assist, your blind spot monitoring, your auto engine idle stop, you can turn that on and off. And then this one does also have the heads up display. So you can actually control when you want that open and close, which I'll demonstrate later. Your traction control is pretty standard. And then down here is where you will find your hood release if you need to go ahead and pop and get in there. So to demonstrate that heads up display, when the vehicle is running, if you would like to enable that heads up display and use it, you just go ahead and press the button and you will see that a cover opens and it pops right up right in front of your steering wheel. So on the heads up display, you do of course see your speed. You do see the little diagram for your lane keeping assist to know that the vehicle has registered the lanes. And then what's really fun is you will also actually see the speed limit of the road you're traveling on. So the vehicle will actually find those signs, it will register that speed, and it will show you right in front of you next to your speed. So you can always easily make sure you're maintaining proper and safe speed. So coming to the inside here, right on the steering wheel, which with this GT Line Turbo, you do get the D-shaped steering wheel, so it's flat on the bottom here. And then you also do get the red accents all the way around your steering wheel and your badging right in the middle there. Then of course you have some of your steering wheel mounted controls. 
So on the left side here, you'll notice a mode and then also your controls for your Bluetooth and voice connectivity. So you can end and start calls that way. You can use your voice commands. If you do use the mode, that will change the um, like entertainment or things that you're listening to. You have those controls right there for you. Behind that, you have your standard controls for your headlights. It does have the auto headlights. You can just set that to auto and never have to worry about it. On the right side, you'll find some of your controls for your adaptive cruise control. You can see you can turn it on and off, and then you can also adjust your speed as well as your following distance. On the right side is also where you're gonna find your settings to run through kind of the middle here on your infotainment system. So you can see, you can see your lane keeping assist, you can go into your regular settings, or you can just have it on your miles per hour that you're traveling. Within this infotainment system is where you'll also find the settings for your heads up display. So you can go right over into settings, go to your head up display, you can change the height of your display, you can rotate it, you can adjust the brightness, you can change what you would actually like to see on it, you can change the size of your speed, and you can also change the color of your speed. So that's where you're going to find a lot of the settings for kind of just some of those convenience features, lights, and everything like that. So right behind that is where you're going to find your standard controls for your windshield wipers and this does have the windshield wiper in the rear so you also find that on that right handle and then this does have the paddle shifters with this being a turbo you probably want kind of a sportier fun driving feel so you can use those paddle shifters to shift through and just make the car a little more responsive and feel like it's some more hands-on driving. So coming into the center here, in addition to that 8 inch heads up display, you do get this big 10.25 inch color touchscreen display. This is a big upgrade from the previous Soul models. I think it really makes this entertainment kind of center pop a lot more. Your vents are kind of built right into this piano black um, screen area here. It is touchscreen like I said, so you can scroll through everything, but you do also have buttons here. You have your standard volume knob, that is also your power. You can tune your radio. This one does have the navigation system, so you do have your button nav, and then you can just go into all the different options if you would like to set directions or anything like that. Coming down from there, you will see it does have the dual climate, um, does have the dual climate. So on either side, you can adjust each temperature for one side or the other, or you can just sync those right up. You have the nice digital screen in the center to show you whatever your temperature is on. You can adjust the fan, um, you can change your mode. So you do have buttons for everything in addition to having the option to do everything through the touch screen. Coming down in the middle here, you do have your standard shifter knob. Again, those red accents you'll see throughout. This is also where you will find your settings for your heated seats. Both front seats are heated as well as the steering wheel, so that's where you're gonna find the options for those. This is where you will also find the options to run through your different drive modes. You have sport and normal. So coming down behind the shifter here, this is kind of where you'll see like all of your power things in this front uh, in this front middle console. On the left side here, you do have one 12 volt plug. In the middle, you have a USB, and on the right side here, you'll find your second USB port. So if you need to plug in wireless chargers or anything, you can do so there. What I really like about the way they did this part is you do still have your regular little storage cubby here. You can toss your wallet, key, cell phone, and then they put the wireless charging pad right up here on kind of its own shelf. So right now my phone is sitting there and you can see that the light is on and that lets me know that with my phone sitting there it is actually charging while I'm driving. So you don't even have to worry about any of the cords or anything, but it is kind of up out of the way in its own little cubby. So I think that was a really, really smart design there. Other than that, you just have your engine start stop. It is the push button start. So as long as you depress on the brake, you can just press that and start the vehicle right up. Coming down into here, you do have two standard cup holders, and that is an, in addition to the two you have on either door. Those can pretty much just hold anything. You do have your emergency parking brake here, a standard pull, pull tab right there for you. Into the middle console, those red accents really kind of continue all throughout. I think they look really cool on the seats. It kind of goes right into the middle console. It is nice soft touch, opening that up. You do get a pretty standard amount of storage in there. 
you can pretty much throw whatever you whatever you would need in there and then just close it right up and you have a little bit of additional storage to go along with that front cubby. So going along with the dash up here, you do get kind of a really deep area right here. You could almost set up a tablet or a laptop and probably watch it because it's pretty big, it's pretty flat. You do again get more of those kind of uniquely shaped vents over there with another speaker and then coming down you'll find your glove box which is just one little pull handle you can pop that right open put in your manuals anything and close that right up over to the passenger side door those red accents continue it's pretty much the same as the driver's side you will find your additional speakers on there your cup holder the same little cubby just a really nice flow up here in this front cabin area. The seats in this GT line turbo trim, you do get that premium cloth and then on the outside you do get the leather lined seats. So it gives a nice little contrast. They're really comfortable to sit in and the leather sides do really hug you and it also just looks really nice with that black leather and the red trim accents. They are the 10-way power adjustable with the lumbar support. So you can really customize it and make sure you have a, a nice comfortable feel when you're driving this sole. So coming up top here, you do get that powered sunroof in this in this trim level. So that's going to be up here in your little cluster. You will find your standard holder for sunglasses, your standard overhead lights, which you can turn on and off, have them turn on and off with the door, and then as well as your sunshade controls. So if you just pop that back, the sunshade will open with the sunroof, and you can see you have a nice, nice little view of the sky up there. If you do want to close it, you just go ahead, pop it forward one touch, and that will close right up for you. So jumping into the back seat here, it's a pretty standard back seat. This is a smaller vehicle, so you're not going to have the room that you would in a full-size SUV or anything. But you do have plenty of room as if it were a full-size sedan or anything. You can have adult passengers back here. I'm 5'7", and I have plenty of headroom. I do have leg room. And it's really nice because that cloth and the leather really continues back here. So these seats are just as comfortable as the front seats. You do, of course, continue with that red accent on the door. You do have more of your 10 speaker Harman Kardon speakers on the doors. You do also get a nice little additional storage pouch back here. So you can toss cell phones, toss maps, whatever you may need. And then down bottom here is where you're gonna find an additional USB port. So if anyone in, in the back seat needs to plug in phone chargers, they do have access to do so. Along the back of the seats here, you will find some of your anchors for if you need to put car seats or anything back here. So those are really accessible. And then if you do only have two passengers, you can just pull down this middle. You do get a nice little armrest and two additional cup holders. So jumping into the hatch here, what's really nice about the sole is that square body shape gives you a nice big opening for your kind of cargo area back here. So you just go ahead, you reach under, you can pop that right up. It's super light, really easy to open. And then you do see that you get some storage back here. You will also have the option to get kind of your um, cargo cover here, which is just a nice foldable cover, but you can also just pop it out. And you have a fully open kind of back cargo area. It is dual leveled, so you do have this top level but you can just pop this open and you do get extra space. Your spare tire is in there and there's also probably about five to six inches of space to store tools in here, throw some extra bags full of gear or whatever you may need. So that's nice to just put in there and tuck away. So if you do need some additional cargo space and you don't need to haul any passengers, you do get that 60-40 split with your seat. So those are really easy to just go ahead and fold down. If you are back here, you can just reach up and there's two little tabs on the side. You can push those up and then you can just go ahead, pop those seats down. So you can pop those down on both sides. They do also fold flat if you don't have things in your back seat. So when those are folded down flat like that, you can see that your cargo area does extend all the way up to those front seats. This is really plenty of room if you needed to maybe haul some furniture or just a lot of gear for a, for a road trip or anything like that. You do get some space in here and then you do get the cargo tie downs. So you can put some netting back here, put whatever you need. 
tie it down, and you're ready to go. So in addition to the 12 volt and the three USBs that you do have throughout the front of the car, you will also find an additional 12 volt plug back here. Just has a cover, so you can pop that right open if you needed to charge something back here, plug in a power converter, whatever you need, you do have an additional power source back in this cargo area. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this thing out on the road. Like I mentioned, this is the turbo, so it does produce 201 horsepower. So we're just waiting to pull out right here. We're gonna see what happens when we hit this gas and we get this thing going. So you can really hear that engine go and you can see how quickly we got up to speed here. Just pulling right out of there. This thing definitely has the power and the steering wheel is super light and easy to steer. So you can just pull out of spots like that and get going and it feels really fun to drive this thing. Once we are out on the road, again, you do see the speed limit and your speed right in front of you with that heads up display. So that's really nice. You don't even have to think about those things. And with this screen right in front of you, the nice thing is the home screen is completely customizable. So as you can see right now, we have our navigation up, which just is monitoring where we're going. That also shows us the speed limit. We have our entertainment. Right now we have the Sirius on, but if you had your phone connected with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which this is capable of connecting, you can display your music right here. And then we also have the weather. But if you didn't want to change any of those things around, you can just hold anywhere on the screen and you'll be able to go ahead and edit those home widgets. Right now, of course, I'm driving, so I can't. But with that navigation up, if I wanted to just kind of keep my maps at all time, you just go ahead and press that and that'll make whichever you choose full screen for you. And when you are full screen, if you did want to see your other things, you can just go ahead and press the little arrow on the side and that'll always pull up your secondary preset that you have there. So as I'm driving this thing with it being kind of that turbo, I do have it in sport mode, but even when you're kind of turning around or anything, these seats really hug you. I'm not always a fan of all leather seats. I think with varying weather and stuff, sometimes they're too hot, sometimes they're too cold, they get sticky. So I really like that the sole has that nice cloth middle. It's super comfortable to sit in. I feel like I'm kind of just floating back in it and then you do get the leather on the outside so it does hug you in nice and tightly. So now I'm going to try to demonstrate some of the safety features. One being the blind spot so you'll see as a car approaches from my left side a light will appear in my side view mirror telling me that it's not safe to pass over into that lane and if a vehicle is approaching and I do decide to turn on my turn signal while that blind spot is lighting up you hear it beep and flash and it flashes on your heads up display to really let you know it is not safe to cross over. Once all the vehicles have passed and there's no longer anyone in your blind spot, it will let you know that it is safe because the light will go off. So coming up here, we're gonna do a quick U-turn. This of course is a really compact square little car. So we imagine the turning radius will be pretty great. So you can see how quick and easy that was, turned right around, stayed within the lines, and you're back on your way. That's one of the nice things about these little soles, their unique shape and kind of their extra compactness and sharp lines does make them super easy to drive. It's super easy to maneuver through traffic, any tight streets, if you're trying to squeeze into smaller parallel parking spots. That's one huge advantage to this kind of car. So in addition to that blind spot monitoring, you do also get the lane keep assist. So the vehicle will actually register the lines on either side of you that will appear in the infotainment screen in front of you and as well as your heads up display in front of you so you'll know that it has picked up those lanes and if you do start to drift, the vehicle will actually correct itself and pull itself to stay within those lanes. So now we're going to go ahead and demonstrate that lane keeping assist. You do have to get up to speed, so once you hit 40 miles per hour, your diagram on your heads up display as well as on the infotainment in front of you will light up letting you know that it has registered those lines. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm purposely going to drift 
across one of the lanes and show you how the vehicle wants to constantly jerk itself back and keep you within those lanes. So it's a very subtle movement. I'll demonstrate again. So you can see there, even going around this turn, I did not touch the steering wheel and the vehicle kept itself within those lines. It does not want to cross those lines. So that lane keeping assist is just really helpful to have if you're maybe a little bit distracted, if you're tired, or sometimes it's just kind of hard to follow, follow the lines of the road and that will always make sure that it does pull you back in, always keep you within those lines. Now that we have this thing on the back roads, I will say it's definitely fun to drive. I'm a fan of kind of smaller, zippier cars, and it holds the roads nicely. It's not too big, it's not too small. It's perfect to kind of take these sharp corners, and I don't really have any issues with drifting or anything or feeling like I'm gonna slide off the road. So it definitely is a nice little compact vehicle to just move, maneuver through any different kinds of roads. Another really fun thing about this Soul if you do remember like the original soul commercials and everything they were all about the music and they were always bobbing and dancing around just a fun little vehicle so in this one you do also get the settings to kind of go along with that music and you can just swipe over it and you'll see you have the sound moon lamp so within there you have two different options we're of course driving right now but you can actually change your lighting and it will go along with the music so you can put like party themes or you can just change the colors and have solid colors so that's just a really fun little feature that you do get on this sole that i think sets it apart from a lot of other vehicles on select trims within the 2020 sole the gt line turbo of course being one of the trims you do get the uvo um, connectivity so that is essentially you can get the app on your phone and that's where you're going to find a lot of the connectivity for servicing your vehicle and everything like vehicle diagnostics but you also get a lot of the things like the 911 call out if there's an accident the roadside assistance so that's a really nice little feature to have you can also the optional features to unlock and lock your vehicle with the phone you can start the vehicle so that's just a really nice connectivity system that kia has put on some of these select trims on the 2020 soul so now we're just gonna go ahead and demonstrate the backup camera. So if you do put the vehicle in reverse, you'll see your camera pops up. It does have the predictive lines. So as I turn the wheel, the lines will shift and let me know where I'm going to end up. You can also kind of adjust it. You can change your brightness and your contrast. So that's just nice, gives it, gives it kind of the customized options to make sure you can see it perfectly, whatever works for you. So as I start to back up, Again, as I turn the steering wheel, the lines will kind of shift and let me know where the vehicle will end up. And the blue lines are always straight back. So you can see how easy it is just to kind of pull perfectly in your spot. It's a nice big backup camera screen there for you. So that's just always a nice little safety feature to have. All right, I hope you enjoyed my review and test drive of this 2020 Kia Soul. If you would like to check out some more of these Souls or any other Kia vehicles, make sure to stop off of Route 30 in Greensburg and visit Smell Kia, or you can check us out online at smellkia.com.